Okay, here we go. Now, this is another book that I've been checking out. I'm going to do two book reviews today. This one. Been and hearing about this for about a year. It came out, I think, in May. Just got my hands on it. Reserved it from the library. I guess a lot of people wanted to check it out. It's called Baccoon by Nora Zora Neale Hurston. She wrote on um, Their Eyes Were Wild. God, I'll probably review that book one of these days. But if I don't, that's a book that you should read. <laughs> that's one of those must reads, you know. And for the African American community, this is one of those must reads. <laughs> I mean, this is walking history. Um, the book is about Zora Neale Hurston. She goes and she interviews this man in 1927. He was born in Africa. And he actually was captured at the age of 19 and got on the boat, was packed on the boat. The Barracoon was the holding cell. And he was shipped to Mississippi. You know, the slave trade was illegal at that time. I think it was 1859. There's a lot of other people that did the review on it. So if you want to know what it's about, they explain it perfectly. Um, but stuff like this, 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 that's, that's what we need to be doing, man. These are the people that we should be studying. His name is Cujo Lewis. That was his American name. His African name. He had a different African name, but he was from West Africa. And he talks about the initiations and how he grew up and how his grandfather had a, a compound and how his grandfather had a certain number of wives. And he talked about how the wives, after a certain number of years, they would go out and get another wife <laughs> and say, hey, you know, my husband is good. He could take care of you. I need some help or <laughs> whatever. You know, I found that fascinating. I even see that in the black community today, you know, because, you know, in Africa, there, you know, there's nothing's bad about it. Don't ever let anybody tell you that, oh, this is the way one man, one woman is all cultural. You know, and at the end of the day, it's a choice. You know, but the Western world, they call that bigamy. But in the ancient world, the Eastern world, you know, and I, it has its advantages, you know, and I'm sure it has its disadvantages. But, you know, the, the grandfather had so many wives and they went through the initiations and, you know, things I think that we need now, you know, not saying I support poly polygamy or anything, but just that structure. That structure was missing in, in many African American families to this day, you know, because that was lost. But it's amazing. This man, he survived slavery. You know, he worked as a slave for years. And after emancipation, he and a couple of other people from Africa, they built a town, Africa Town, which is still in Mobile, Alabama. To this day, maybe one day I'll ride through there. It's called Plateau, Alabama. I'm, I one day we'll get a chance. We'll ride through there and I'll go take some pictures. Of, you know, depends on how it feels. You know, some places I don't want to be just taking pictures. You know, this is where these people live. But <clears throat> one of these days I'm going to pass through there and just see it. You know, maybe when we go to the lynching museum in Montgomery, I'll pass through there because I actually want to see this. But Eventually, his wife dies. He loses his children. One of his sons are shot. One of his sons are decapitated, but he still moves on, and he still goes on, and he has his, his, his son's wife, I think, is still there, and he has grandchildren, and even great-grandchildren. There's some more follow-up on his story, but I think things like this, books like this are so important, you know, to get that history. Because once these people go, it's over. <laughs> and that's why I encourage anyone, like anyone that's watching this and to my son, always write down, man. Write it down. You might think your life is insignificant, but 100 years from now, somebody's going to be looking, you know, <laughs> they're going to be wondering, how was their everyday life? How did they live? You know, and that's why I do these videos. 
Because maybe it might be 50 years down the line and they'll say, hi, why? What was a, a regular black person was thinking about? Not the celebrity, not the, the athlete. Uh, you know, what was a regular person, a guy that this everyday guy I thought about, you know, what were they doing with their lives, you know, you know, were they all doing the, the Kiki challenge, <laughs> you know, because that's how the news goes. And, and that's a minority of the people anyway, the average people out here trying to make it. So, you know, stories like this are awesome. You know, this man. This man went through probably more than what the average person in, in his in the history of this world went through, going through the middle passage and being sold like an animal, <laughs> you know, being treated like an animal, being and it talks about the king of Dahomey, which was an African nation who actually came to his village or whatever, his town, and burned it down and kidnapped him and the people from his town and sold him to the Portuguese, so uh, where he said the Portuguese, but it was an American guy into slavery. And, you know, a lot of people, oh, well, the, they say the Africans sold each other into slavery or whatever, but just goes to show you that there's no such thing as a perfect society. I see a lot of people, and even when you get older, they'll try to romanticize, you know, and say, oh, Africa was just this great place. You know, where everybody was in harmony and <laughs> there was no kill, like it was just heaven and there's no such society, no such place. I've even heard people say that there was no homosexuality in Africa. Like, dude, come on. Everything that there is now, there was then. Every, you know, you might, I don't, I don't say that that's an ill, but I'm just saying every thing that you may say an ill in society has always been. That's why you see me, I'm relaxed because I'm not one of these people that say, oh, this is the end times and <laughs> it has never been this bad, you know. Things are what they are. It's, it's human beings. As long as human human nature has always been the same from now to 6,000 years ago <laughs> on every continent, every the people in Africa, they were cheating each other, they were killing each other, they were raping each other. Just like they're doing now. <laughs> now, when I say they, I don't mean Africans in general. I mean human beings. And anywhere you go in the world, there's always going to be a lower class, high class, middle class. Anywhere you go, India, Pakistan, Vietnam, you know. So never fall into that trap. I see a lot of these guys, they, they think they're teachers and they're trying to get a following. And they're selling this, this African superiority. You know, oh, in ancient Africa, we were, they say we were all socialists and we all shared everything. And, you know, all the women, the men married the women and there was no adultery and there was no jealousy. Come on, man, give me a break. <laughs> you know, I'm sure that there was people with the war just like France and Germany and everybody go to war and just like, did this street against that street in this neighborhood against that neighborhood. That's human nature, you know, and we have to rise above that. And I'm sure at that time there was people that rose above it and did great things. But to paint any society that it was just utopia is just foolish to me. You know, and when I read this, I don't get shocked because I don't believe that narrative that, oh, it was the big mean white man. No, slavery was a global system. I mean, everybody had a part in it, <laughs> from the guys who made the boats to the sails. There was even insurance companies that would insure slaves. They would give you a policy. So if something happened to your slave, you could cancel in like they do with cars and all of that. You know, there were black overseers. There were even black people that owned slaves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you go to in Haiti and Espanol, I mean, New Orleans was one of the biggest places for that because you had what's called free people of color. And most of the time it was a slave woman, a, a female slave and a white man. They would have a baby. You know, he would take care of her and they would have children. And these children would be called free people of color and they would own slaves. 
you know. So there's never no one bad guy and good guy, you know. But anyway, I like to go on tangents like that too, because the book is the book. You're gonna read it, and that's what I want you to do when you read stuff. You go on and and you listen to what other people say, and you have your own thoughts about it. That, that's why we have. That's why it's considered great works of art because. When I look at something, you may think about something. When I, I hear something, you might think about something else. That's a great, that's a um, great work of art. And this was actually a great book. You know, I didn't, I didn't really like the the um the way she wrote, the way he spoke, the dialect. You know, I kind of hate that in those older books. I understand that you know she's trying to get his authentic voice, but you know. I just, that's just my one of my pet peeves. I don't like that. <laughs> you read out of some of the slave narratives and they have dim was us. Ooh, and I understand the people who write like that, but it's hard. It's kind of hard to understand. I got to kind of go back and understand what he's saying, you know? So I, I sometimes I think it'd be better if they just wrote it in, you know, plain English so we could understand more what he's saying. And, you know, but I understand why they do it, the sound. So, you know, but I thought this was an awesome book. I thought this was an awesome book. I think that anybody that's listening should read it. You know, the forward, I usually don't read introductions and forwards in books, but the forward by Alice Walker in this book was awesome. <laughs> and I just read some of it. Life, inexhaustible, goes on. And we do too, carrying our wounds and our medicines as we go. Ours is, a, and ours is an amazing, a spectacular journey in Americas. It is so remarkable, one can only be thankful for it, bizarre as that may sound. Perhaps our planet is for learning to appreciate the extra, extraordinary wonder of life that surrounds even our suffering, and to say yes, if through the thickest of tears. You know. And I think that goes, that goes with it. Hey, is you get one life and you go through it and hopefully somebody will learn from it, you know, and that's all you get. Whether I, I don't know if you define that to being successful or not, everybody has a different definition of success, but you go through and you pass it on if you can, if somebody's willing to listen, but it helps you to just get it out. So. That's it for this weekend. You know, I got some other books I'm reading. You know, I'll do some reviews maybe next next weekend. So get a chance. And I'm going to enjoy the rest of my weekend. I hope you do too. Peace.